Welcome to Orca Talk by the Human Pod Podcast, brought to you by FreeOrcasNow.com. Check out our website and follow us on Facebook at our Free Orcas Now education page, Twitter, Pinterest, Google, and all the social media. This being the first episode of Orca Talk, I'd like to introduce myself, your host and friendly anti-captivity advocate, Rusty Johnson. I'll be your humble podcaster on board for orcas and orca rights. Actually, not just orcas, but all marine mammals in captivity worldwide. I think it only proper to start off this first episode of Orca Talk with a brief history of orca captivity, followed by why abolishing captivity will make the world a better place. So let's talk Orca Talk, because this needs to be talked about and worked out. (coughs) 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 Episode 1, A Super Condensed History of Orca Captivity. It all started in the 1960s, right around 1961. Bodie Rogues for Hire hunted down, captured, and forcibly removed orcas from their natural ocean habitat and lifelong family groups, or pods. Using brutal device, dynamite explosives, and netting, large crews contracted by newly forming sea parks brutally killed many orcas to capture what specimens survived the mayhem. Coastal communities were traumatized witnessing these events and are still affected to this day. The exact number of wild orcas is not well documented for the obvious reason that it is inherently wrong and immoral, but what is known that of the documented 145 orcas as harvested from the wild, they are doomed to endure being bought and sold and often transferred from one facility to another into a life of performance slavery and display and are forced into reproducing and having their babies taken, which in the wild never leave their pod. Older orcas are typically kept in a horribly tiny pool in solitude that are often too shallow to dive, often baking in the full sun each and every day when they are no longer an asset to a show or performance. They are hidden and often unaccounted for victims, succumbing to combined maladies of depression, self-mutilation, aggression, illness and infection, neurosis to total psychosis with no desire to live anyway. There are several documented cases of captives coming down with undiagnosed lung fungus that slowly travels to the brain, decomposing it, rendering the poor creatures to insanity, displaying radical self-mutilation and death. It is hard to even imagine how painful such a slow, infectious death as this must feel. Out of all orcas taken from the wild, only 20 are still alive in captivity today. The remainder have already died in miserable lives of bondage. A statistic that is known is that 92% of orcas from SeaWorld do not survive past the age of 25 years old. Worse yet, the result of these ocean kidnaps are theorized by scientists to actually strain the natural numbers in the wild, and sadly some resident species have been declared endangered over the course of 2014 into 2015. Overfishing and dams are other factors that are highly likely to be reconsidered to remediate precarious pod numbers in danger of extinction now and try to increase the likelihood of these pods' survival. Orcas continue to be studied in and out of captivity. While there is still so much to learn from these highly intelligent marine mammals, we now know orcas live into their late 90s in the wild. Some have even been flourishing at the age of 103 years old and confirmed by oceanographers just in 2014. Yet in captivity, orcas live an average of 25 short years. Many die before five years in captivity or are stillborn. Aquarium theme park tanks are cruel prisons, providing less space than 1% of their natural environment in the wild. Orcas travel upwards of and over 100 miles a day in the wild. This equates to some ridiculous numbers of 1,400 dizzying laps, roughly, in a chlorinated pool. This number, of course, depends on the dimensions of the geometric confine, but realistically and truthfully, there is no confine that can be made to reasonably accommodate a global apex predator like the orca. 
In isolated tanks, eco-location, the very essence of their existence, is completely plundered. Orca communication and hunting skills are unused and lost. The frequent mixing of mismatched orcas from different pods in Seaquarium Park pools each possess their own unique language dialect. This results ultimately in violent behavior and attacks on the weaker member in these small, shallow, thimble-sized pools. Orca at theme parks are deluged with loud music and crowds, forced trained to perform to eat, and then have to eat an unnatural diet of dead fish, often stuffed with drugs to control their, quote, violent behavior. A plethora of other maladies, neglect, and the overall inability to avoid mistreatment occurs in captivity. The bottom line is, orcas are compromised for human entertainment, and sea parks have been benefiting financially from their suffering for over 50, going on 60 years now. Depression and despondence is typical of orcas in captivity. Mental illness and documented accounts of self-mutilation, even suicide, result from this inhumane, unethical, lifelong slavery to perform daily for the corporation and audience. Well-publicized trainer deaths are another sad fact as a side effect of this industry that will be discussed further in podcast episodes as no orcas have ever attacked a human in the wild. Ever. Ironically, these deaths finally brought to light the initial investigation that has exposed the cruelty of orcas in captivity. It's sad that trainers had to die to hear these helplessly trapped creatures are in such a horrible situation. More recently, theme park corporations have developed artificial insemination programs, namely SeaWorld. They've fostered hybrid cetaceans in captivity now that ocean capture has been outlawed. These hybrid species would never have existed under normal reproductive conditions, and sadly, the forced offspring will never be capable of faring for themselves in the wild, even if laws were mandated to release all orcas in captivity tomorrow. The Association of Zoos and Aquariums is one of the overseer groups that regulate ocean park aquariums accredited in the United States. It's run by volunteers, by no other than SeaWorld, quote, who can choose to be a part of it, unquote. From a SeaWorld website page, you can read yourself at www.awesomeocean.com. So, They partially oversee themselves, coercing and massaging the rules that behoove themselves and have been all along. There are only so many, and they make the rules. Marine mammal parks and the like have been getting away with murder, literally. Since Blackfish two years ago, public intolerance has sprung to eradicate captivity globally. Hope from unaccountable non-profit organizations wanting to make a change have been organized. SeaWorld, the Blackstone Corporation, and a number of other seaquariums around the world have been publicly engaged by criticism and press, on-site, street demonstrations, petitions, court battles, and other endeavored by the public to desist captivity permanently. Declining attendance and falling stock revenues resulted for SeaWorld's Blackstone Group, now a public stock that has lost over 50% of its value to date. Since 2012, at least 11 orcas have been captured in Russian waters, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. After Blackfish, the growing public awareness has turned into a full-fledged movement. Efforts have resulted in the realization of several bills being currently considered in several states in America, as well as considerations in the UK, Europe, and many of the countries outlying captivity already. The movement has gained momentum and advocates are thrilled to see results from their efforts. Ontario's new anti-captivity and breeding laws are a big part of this in 2015, as well as a land-breaking San Francisco resolution declaring cetaceans, whales, dolphins, and porpoises the right to be free. That was late in 2014. Right now, Washington State is working on declaring laws to prevent any captivity ever occurring in their state. And in 2013, India declared dolphins as non-human persons. They follow the lead of Costa Rica, Hungary, and Chile. 
So we are seeing change and witnessing actual history in the making. But late in 2014, new orca and beluga captures in northern Russian waters were reported. An ugly rumor that China might be developing new sea park aquariums was also confirmed. Since it has been verified that SeaWorld is involved overseas, now offering their skilled services to coach training and assist in implementing artificial insemination programs there. So diplomatically at this point, there's only so much that can be done across international boundaries and laws, people, their languages, and respective cultures. Anti-captivity advocates are perplexed, feeling powerless in regard to an effective strategy to move forward their global anti-captivity movement. So what can be done? How can we help? Orca Talk by the Human Pod podcast has an answer. Providing the latest news in orca freedom, laws, and improvements for marine mammals worldwide, and ultimately contributing to the steady march toward a more humane world. Orchitoc is seeking sponsorship and financial aid to begin forming a nonprofit status for Orchitoc and FreeOrcasNow.com. And that brings us to future considerations, and that's where you come in. Are you multilingual? Because orcas need you. Help us broadcast Orca Talk worldwide. Orca Talk is seeking podcasters that speak Japanese, Russian, Chinese, and other languages. A call out to all nations. Ever think about broadcasting your voice? This is the opportunity and for a great cause. Inviting listeners who are multilingual to come on board and broadcast Orca Talk. Drop me an email at freeorcasnow at gmail.com and let's talk. Or visit freeorcasnow.com or Facebook, keywords, Free Orcas Now. Subscribe and follow Orca Talk, and please tell your friends. For the last portion of this podcast, I'd just like to go over 10 ways that abolishing orca captivity will make the world a better place, and to let you know about future shows up and coming. We'll be talking about and talking with professionals around the world who are trying to help orcas and what you can do to help them too. 10 ways the abolishment of orca captivity will make the world a better place. One, abolishing captivity will stop disturbance of tampering with the orca gene pool. Two, abolishing captivity will promote real education and real conservation efforts instead of false beliefs based on corporate propaganda. Three, abolishing captivity will help society transcend the shallow notion that the only and all value of doing anything must be for some kind of monetary profit primarily. Four, abolishing captivity supports and encourages empathy for all. It just makes the world a better place. Five, abolishing captivity will encourage the growth of a clean and friendly ecotourism industry and the technology and accessibility to all that goes with it. For example, drone photography, ecotourism, and holographic zoos. Six, abolishing captivity will help society end the acceptance of physical suffering of captive intelligent animals, not only helping the animals, but elevating society. Not just physical suffering, but also reproductive torture, familial suffering, and self-mutilation. 7. Abolishing captivity will help society end the acceptance inflicting psychological damage of captive intelligent animals. 8. Abolishing captivity will stop bully-inspired messages to society, and that bullying is okay. 9. Abolishing captivity will stop the belief that drugs have their place in maintaining artificial behavior when there is no legitimate medical requirement. It will stop controlling animals through drugging them. And 10. Abolishing captivity is important because mostly it's just morally right. Well, that's all for Orca Talk this time. And in closing, I'd like to quote Jack Cousteau. When we return wild animals to nature, we merely return them to what is already theirs. For men cannot give wild animals freedom. They can only take it away. Please subscribe to Orca Talk. And again, tell your friends about us too as we continue to bring you cetacean rights, news, and history that's being made yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For orcas and all marine mammals, freedom. Freedom.